Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and today we're talking about what you should do if you get bit by a tarantula or stung by a venomous scorpion or pretty much any type of invert. It is important to note right off the bat that this is not medical advice. If you have been bitten or stung by a venomous invert, then you need to contact a physician and seek out medical assistance right away. In this video, we're just sharing our experiences and knowledge to give you an idea of what to expect and what you can do in the unfortunate circumstance that something like this were to happen. Now, this is a clip from my podcast you can find on my second channel, The Exotic Pet Collective, where I was talking to Dr. Dalal, who is an ER physician with a background in wilderness medicine that has also given a lot of lectures on venomous bites from arthropods. And the second guest on my podcast was Coyote Peterson, who's well known for his YouTube channel, Brave Wilderness, as well as a show on Animal Planet. I mean, the man has a lot of experience with being envenomated. And if this is your first time on my channel, I make videos about tarantulas, scorpions, and other invertebrates and it's awesome to have you. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump into the conversation. How's that sound? <laughs> I feel kind of like we're on two separate spectrums of this. You know, I was uh, watching some of your videos last night with my kid. He was kind of giving me a hard time because he really enjoys your content. He's not a big fan of my content. Um, and because, I mean, you actually, you're going out into nature. You're finding these spider snakes and scorpions and, you know, kind of finding them in their native habitat and interacting with them and getting bit and stung in some situations where I actually do the opposite. I have, I, I stay in my basement hidden here in the foothills of the Appalachians with uh, my spider snakes and scorpions safely in these enclosures. And I make videos about, you know, kind of teaching people how to take care of them and avoid getting bit or stung. So I don't have any experience or knowledge about venom. So I, I'm really excited to get both of you guys on the podcast here to talk about this. Yeah, well, I certainly, you know, I love your backdrop there. It seems like you are probably in the arachnophobic nightmare experience for anybody that's afraid of spiders with all the cool looking uh, creatures you must have there in the background. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to yeah. share any of my experiences that I've had today and, and any stories that you guys feel uh, are, are pertinent. Um, certainly been through some pretty crazy uh, I was just saying, I put myself into some pretty crazy scenarios to experience some of these bites and stings, but um, there's obviously a rhyme and reason behind what it is that we do and why we do it. So you guys let me know whatever you want to know and I'll do my best. Now, if someone were to get stung or bit, uh, what is the, the first thing they should do uh, as far as like treating that? Well, it depends on what you're, you know, what you're dealing with. Obviously, if it's just, if it's a, uh, you know, some a on a palma, it's probably not going to do too much, but you should definitely cleanse the area with some soap and water. Um, and then you can just put pressure on it and, and it should be okay. Most of the time, the immediate reaction is not very painful. There's going to be some mechanical damage, just the size of the fangs might damage some structures, might cause some bleeding, uh, but you're not going to have anything too severe and you should be okay after that. Now, if it's a, a, a postletheria, or an age mac or something like that it's going to be different um initially you may not have pain at all some of the venom actually has some uh, paralyzing effect and numbing effect, so the initial pain might not be there and then you'll go into uh, more severe muscle cramps and things like that at that point is when you may want to seek medical care um there are things that they can do at the hospital like fluids um, you may need a tetanus shot and later down the line, if there's an infection, you'd want to get antibiotics and that type of thing. Uh, but the initial care, I think, is just general first aid. Uh, wash it off with soap and water, keep the area nice and compressed. And, and that's the best thing to do initially. And then contact the healthcare professional. And by the way, nothing I wouldn't, if you get bit, seek care from a, a doctor that, that you know. Um, don't take advice, medical advice here, obviously. <laughs> that's that's a really good point. And the one thing I was going to add to everything you said is pretty much spot on. And in our line of work specifically, when we're producing videos and you've got the number of eyeballs on a video and we always say to our audience or whoever it is that's watching, watch the signs of your body, consider certain bites or stings, potentially medical emergencies, right? If you're bitten by a venomous snake, a copperhead, a water moccasin, a rattlesnake, you know, within the realms of the US, let alone one of the species outside of the US, it's a medical emergency. When it comes to spiders and scorpions, you know, again, it depends where you are and pay attention to the signs of your body. If you feel like your throat is tightening up, if you feel like you're having some sort of an allergic reaction, go seek medical help as quickly as possible. But if you take a bite from a spider and, you know, it's a wolf spider or a tarantula or something that you don't necessarily recognize, 
pay attention to the bite and, you know, let your body be the one that tells you whether or not you truly need to, to seek medical help. But when in doubt, there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor to at least, at least let a medical professional know what it is that you've been through. I always found it interesting when, uh, you know, people would be describing uh, you know, in a bite report, especially from different species of tarantulas, just the, the wide variety of how long the pain lasted, if there was swelling, if there was numbness, uh, you know, and it, it, it always kind of struck me as, uh, as interesting. That's even just different species in the same genus can have uh, different effects on the body as far as their venom. But I am curious, doctor, if someone were to be bit or stung, um, like I know here in West Virginia, there's like the hospitals have no anti-venom, especially for like a lot of the scorpions and spiders that I have. So if I were to get bit and needed to go to the hospital, um, you know, first off, what would I need to tell them uh, for them to be able to treat me? But also what what would they have at their um, disposal as far as treatment? Right. And and so if a, a patient's coming into the hospital and their chief complaint is got bit by a spider, first of all, what we need to do is verify that it was actually a spider bite. So in order to verify it was a spider bite, we have to do a few things. We have to the person, the patient has to have seen the spider, captured it, seen it bite you, and then have symptoms compatible with the spider bite. If they don't have all of those, it's not a verified spider bite. So 99% of the time it's not, and we need to look for other medical diagnosis. In the case that it is a confirmed spider bite, a lot of it is just symptomatic treatment. So is there any damage to the area from the, the fangs? Is there, um, obviously if you're going into anaphylaxis, then we need to address that but really otherwise it's symptomatic so pain pain medications muscle relaxers fluids that kind of thing checking routine lab work and then kind of going from there so there's actually not a whole lot um obviously in the case of anaphylaxis that's a completely different picture and a completely different story then we need to utilize life-saving measures to uh, improve breathing and keep circulation up uh, but in the case of a regular spider bite, there is no anti-venom here. I know in Australia, they have it for the, the funnel web, but you know, not, not here. We don't use any anti-venom for uh, recluse or widow bites. So really it's just pain management and, and checking for anaphylactic Correct. response. Correct. Yes, exactly. That's pretty much it. And yeah. so, and you know, checking for other things, you know, that's the, that's the other big thing. So what would be some of the the most worrisome symptoms that you would start getting uh, if, if you had been envenomated? Yeah, the number one thing is always watching out for anaphylaxis. So anaphylactic symptoms would be um, lip swelling, tongue swelling, difficulty breathing, wheezing, feeling like you're breathing out of a straw, that kind of thing, and maybe passing out. And those are all very dangerous for sure. Um, and, and and obviously call the ambulance, call the ER, get there as soon as possible. But other than that, you know, it's just symptomatic fluids, pain control. There's some people that obviously think that every spider's gonna bite you. And then there's some people that think that they're all good and nothing's gonna happen. And, yeah. I, and I mean, it's there's no hard, fast rule. Um, you know, if you're a little kid or you're an elderly person, you have other medical problems and an age Mac bites you, that's gonna be bad. Yeah. You're, you're gonna suffer. If it's your own young, healthy person, it's gonna suck for 14 days, two, three weeks. Um, but you'll, you'll probably be okay. You're going to yeah. have pain. I was actually reading one report where, uh, there was a 19 year old kid that got, uh, bit by an H Mac and he had so much muscle rigidity that they went to give him a shot of pain medication and, and the muscles were so rigid, they couldn't even get the, the shot in there. One of the other interesting, uh, case reports that I came across was, or not a case report, but a study that I came across was a, uh, they were studying the different effects of, um, they studied Postolotheria regalis, uh, Serrata jaris darlini, and then one of the Brachypelma species. And they found that the uh, the amount of venom it took to kill a cricket, so the most lethal was the um, the Postolotheria. The second was actually the Brachypelma, and they were pretty close. And the third was the Serrata gyrus darlini. And it turned out that the the Darlini venom was designed to actually just paralyze the prey and it didn't actually kill him. So if you, if it injected the cricket, 24 hours later, the cricket would be fine. And so it, it, and that kind of plays into the fact that there's different components to the venom and how it affects the cricket is not how it's going to affect us necessarily. Yeah. So they're thinking that the amount of enzymes in the venom that can break down tissue relates to how, uh, how bad it is for humans. 
So, you know, there's a lot more studying to do, but I don't think that they're ever going to come up with like treatments because it doesn't really kill anyone. And so there's not a big incentive to do that. Yeah. It's just kind of the, the consequences of your actions and you're going to have to go right. through that pain. <laughs> it's not right. going to kill you. Just right, make right. you stronger. Just in case somebody's listening, you know, and they're taking care of the tarantulas or their scorpions and, you know, maybe they're feeding them or rehousing or something. They get tagged, uh, especially if it's like by mm. an old world. Uh, or, you know, just a very uh, hot scorpion. Um, initially, like, is it like a snake bite? You can suck the venom out or is it as soon as it, it hits you? And that venom's already kind of having an effect on the tissues and getting into your bloodstream. Right. And so according to what I've read, the studies that you can't really suck it out, but they say applying localized pressure can kind of um, stop the spread. But so what you want to do initially. So first off, um, always talk to your doctor, but First off, if you get bit, the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you can get the tarantula back to, um, it's not going to tag you again. Let's make sure that it's not going to hit you again, get away from the area. Um, and then you want to make sure that you're breathing okay. You're not, your lips aren't swelling, your tongue's not swelling, that kind of thing. If that's not happening, then you can kind of decipher, well, what, what did I get bit by? Is it something that's going to cause severe problems? Is it something just like a bracket palma that's maybe not going to cause us severe problems. Um, if it is going to cause severe problems, you probably would want to talk to your doctor or get to the hospital to make sure that you can get IV fluids, pain medicine, the cramps don't get too severe, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, if it if it's a species where it's not going to really cause any problems, I'd say you can probably wait it out. Um, probably just stay hydrated and, and do all that. Make sure you're not going to have any subsequent allergic reactions. Now, if it's a, a black widow or brown recluse, um, again, make sure that you're not going to get tagged again. Make sure you get out of the area. Make sure you're not having any anaphylactic reactions. And then I don't think it's urgent that you would necessarily have to um, seek medical care immediately uh, unless you were going to have any severe um, symptoms, just because they're not really going to be able to do anything other than and symptomatic treatment. Now, down the line, if you develop an infection or something like that, that it is possible and you may need antibiotics. Again, always talk to your doctor and, and uh, seek appropriate medical care. So let's say I got tagged. Uh, first thing to do then would mm -hmm. apply pressure. So like uh, compression straps or like an ace bandage or mm -hmm. something like that. Kind of wrap that around the area to kind of constrict yeah. the blood yeah, flow. Yeah, correct. I, I mean, uh, w wash it off, make sure it's clean and then and then uh, apply pressure. Okay. And as far as, uh, you know, say it's, you know, a I don't, know, I don't want to pick a, pick on a species, but an old world tarantula bites me, uh, mm -hmm. and I start experiencing the pain. I, I, I did the compression, I, I washed it off, all that kind of stuff. Uh, is there any uh, like can I take ibuprofen, uh, Benadryl, well, anything like that, kind of like relieve any of the symptoms, or maybe like take the edge off at all, or is it pretty much right. it, it's going to hurt? And you're going to go through it. Oftentimes, they recommend ibuprofen or, or Tylenol or something like that. Um, alert if it's an allergic reaction, they might recommend Benadryl. Otherwise, Benadryl won't do too much. So more just okay. Advil, Tylenol, as long as there are no other contraindications, no other, uh, you don't have any other personal medical problems that you can't take those medications for. Uh, other than like maybe your throat tightening or kind of getting an anaphylactic response, uh, are there any other um, like levels of pain or swelling or anything that would be uh, kind of an indicator that all right, you, you can't handle this on your own, you need to go to the hospital? Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, if you're having severe muscle spasms and, and rigidity, one of the things they can do is they can give you uh, IV magnesium and that can help relieve spasms. They can give you IV uh, calcium sometimes to replace your calcium because the venom causes a lot of electrolyte shifts in your body. And so sometimes replacing those electrolytes um, through the IV can help. That's one thing. Uh, another thing is you want to make sure that you can uh, maintain your own hydration. And so if you're having severe muscle spasms or you can't even eat or drink or anything like that, you probably would want to seek care so that you can you know, stay hydrated. Well, that was a very interesting conversation. And I want to thank Dr. DeLaw and Coyote Peterson for being willing to come on the podcast. It was a lot of fun having you all. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I upload new videos every Tuesday and every Friday. And if you haven't already, make sure you go over to my second channel, The Exotic Pet Collective, subscribe and check out all the videos there that you've missed. If you want to know the top 10 mistakes that I've made in the tarantula hobby, just check out this video right here. And if you want a crash course on keeping 
keeping tarantulas, just watch this playlist right here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>